here, baby. We here. Know about this. Yes, sir. <laughs> the pull-up show, y'all. Just seen a love. We here. I mean, oh my goodness, this is such a blessing for me. We're here with Grip. What's up, though? I didn't even introduce. I mean, just seen a love. The pull-up show. Shout out to this part network. Shout out to Lavish Live. You already know we're living a little lavish here. Damn, it's the pickup situation, yeah, the pull-up situation. Yeah, this is fire. <laughs> I appreciate y'all having me. Oh my goodness, this is such a blessing. Shout out to Laura, one of the hardest working girls in the industry. Baby, you oh, made this happen for me. I had to throw that out there. So you're on tour. Uh, yeah. Shout out to Prof. Yeah, man. Shout what out you Prof. guys are doing, the yeah. gallery tour. The gallery tour. Let's talk about that. What man. it feels like. Man. So like uh I wasn't too aware like of Prof's music or I knew some some of the music, but like the fan base. So I didn't know, you know, so um when we got that call from Laura and she kinda was just like, Yeah, yeah, like I think this would be something that y'all wanna do. Like, hell yeah. Cause we just want to get in front of people regardless right so like we get to milwaukee the first day and this shit is like packed it's like uh the, the rave i think was the name of the venue probably the best venue i've ever been to like a lot of history like uh just tupac signature and you there. saying packed you know, but we're so, talking about sold out sold out sold out sold, sold out. out yeah <laughs> sold out at least yeah all most of the dates have been sold out it's been crazy and the people have been very uh receptive of the music and you know a lot of them never heard of me so like when they get there and it's like bro some people there for me but like most of the people like bro i never heard of you like this is crazy so it's been dope man shout out prof shout out laura and i got super excited <laughs> but i mean we're here with storyteller lyricist grip what you bring to the table we're gonna get into this yeah, sure. how did going back to the tour talk um getting ready for a tour Mm -hmm. Choosing the music for a tour, mm -hmm. how do, and then it has yeah. to does yeah. it have to match what prop is kind of like you know like, we're yeah, working yeah, with yeah. the same sound. You, you can adjust, <laughs> you can adjust a little bit like night by night, just because like you can just you can tell from the fans, you know what I'm saying? Like because prop is gonna his shit gonna be lit regardless. Like that's who they there for, you know what I'm saying? Like but like with me, it's more so like all right, do I adjust for like the type of crowd it is? Like sometimes. Just small adjustments though, because at the end of the day, you want to give them you. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's like, it don't matter what profit to go out there and do. Like, this this 40 minutes that I'm on the stage, like, I'm trying to get y'all's attention. I'm trying to get y'all to fuck with me. So, I just keep it myself. You know what I'm saying? I keep, like, whatever we was originally going to do. Make small adjustments, but yeah, no, it's dope. Um, how did I get prepared for this shit? I'm, I wasn't as prepared as I should have been. Is it like a marathon, right? Yeah, oh, that's crazy. And everything comes like so quick. We was like, oh shit, we leave next week. Oh shit. So, uh, you know, just, it's all just adjusted. Winging yeah, it yeah. Wing, winging and... that shit. We, we take a very punk, punk approach by like me and Ted. Like, we don't really, like, we kind of just get our songs together that day. Like, what we feeling like, you know, we don't really rehearse and shit. Like, you know, we'll do sound check, but like, that's about it. But, it works, you know what I'm saying? So, you know. I remember that's cool. beautiful to hear, especially where you're at right now. Yeah. How far you've came. I mean, you murdered the game, right? When Porsche yeah, came man. out. Oh, yeah, yeah. I would say, sure. me personally, right? Yeah, you murdered yeah. the game when Porsche came out. Then you get phone calls of all phone calls. Yeah, yeah. Shouts to Eminem. Yeah, shout out to And I say yeah. that gracefully. Like, yeah. I'm like, shouts to Eminem. Right, right, right. <laughs> but well, this is M. Yeah. To me, that's getting that phone call. I mean, as a rapper, right? You come into the game. A boy from ATL. Right. Right. You're putting your all into what you're doing. Because to me, it's substance. It's content. It's visually. Right. You're doing all that. of this. I appreciate that. And then you get this phone call. To me, it's phone calls of all phone calls. Mm -hmm. Let's take it a little bit back to yeah, that moment and yeah. what that was like. Um, crazy thing was, it was like during COVID. So like, it was like, uh, then of course you wanted to meet him face to face and shit, but like it was middle of lockdown and shit. Um, I just remember Ted telling me that like, that uh, M wanted to, you know, jump on the call and talk and shit. And I'm just like, Hey, Eminem, yeah, like, you know Eminem, what I'm saying? Eminem, Eminem, you sure you checked this right. email? <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, so once that happened, you know, we, we talked for a while and, you know, just kind of just about everything, <clears throat> everything, like even outside of the music shit. And, uh, damn, man, it was crazy. It was crazy. And then the first time I got to meet him, I played my album for him. I played IDFT, like, right before I had finished it. 
and, you know, asking him to jump on walkthrough or whatever. But, like, it was just crazy. Like, a full circle moment. I grew up listening to him. So, like, to have him on the on the phone or, you know, in person and just, like, quoting my songs or, my, or certain shit that I say in the song or, you know, just saying how this shit's dope or you think that I'm just, like, one of the best type shit. Like, that's dope as fuck to hear from him, you know, so. Coming from one of the Hell best, Hell yeah, right? from uh, <laughs> arguably the best, you know. And you know? I have to stress a moment like this, right? Because to me, it shows your dedication to hip hop, to rap. The fact that this was a few years ago and you're still working like you're unsigned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're still uh, yeah. giving your all. You had the visuals before needing the visuals. And now, because yeah. I feel like that's a piece where an artist says, oh my God, I get signed and I have a co-sign like Eminem. Right, right. And you kind of like Let take, up off the gas. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can't. It's like, because at the end of the day, they want you, if y'all, at the end of the day, if you look at it as, business partners like mm -hmm. you gotta do your part just like they gotta do their part but right. you, you more so want to do your part so when it's time for them to do their part it ain't it ain't no no questions it ain't no well what, where, where's this at what did you is it ready is it like, just be ready all right so that's what the kind of we kind of already had that before like that's just me and tig kind of just been grinding like that you know so like when they hit this it's like for a second i think that we got a little stagnant at first it was like okay, I'll bet this we we still the same same game. No nothing changed. It's just the names, you know what I'm saying. So we just take a you know hands on approach and try to knock just knock shit out, stay ahead of shit, you know. So that's how we do it, and it's been working so far. So oh my goodness. <laughs> so okay, so the lyricism. What does it take for you? I mean, and this is years on years. This is trends moving. This is an era where everything is very mm -hmm. push, very clickbait, mm -hmm. very yep. and grip. Mm -hmm. I mean, your name kind of your name kind of is everything you are. Because <laughs> once you got that grip, you ain't changing. <laughs> yeah. What does that take from an artist? Um, I think. How do you stay in that light? Man, for me, I don't know. It's tough. It's just like. Once you once you get some footing, just like just build on that, you know. Like once you got some people who are listening, and like, cause it's tough now. It's like people come out every fucking day, you know what I'm saying? Like it's it's tough to find. To and find, they're signing themselves. Oh, and what I mean by that is, right? Like, you stream, bro, you make music, the numbers, bro, like, and exactly. But like just the lyrical shit, it's just what I when I grew up on. That's how I started it. That's just. That's what's in me, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I, I don't know anything else. Like, if I, I, I'm not just gonna give some bullshit, you know what I'm saying? Like, and luckily, I do have a fan base, you know what I mean? Like, no matter how small or big it may be, like, you got a fan base and you build on that. Like, if these people are coming to you for this certain sound or certain quality music, and you know what I'm saying? Like, I just, I'm, I use that as like inspiration. That's the motivation, it's like, Feed your fans, you know, and then the ones who come from the outside, like if they do, they do. If they don't, they don't. You know, don't worry about that shit. So, yeah, man, the lyric lyricism just kind of runs in my in my veins, man. Like it's who I grew up on, DMS and Eminem and Jay and all these people. I'm just like you know, so I was practicing a long time ago. So, kind of translated to now. <laughs> oh my God, I love it. Yeah. So we talk about momentum. We talk about. To me, I feel like. There's no rush with your music. You drop a project and it's truly yeah. at your moment, what you're feeling. Right. It's something you've worked on. Yeah, yeah. It's not something chased. Right. Yo, I, I gotta look at the list here, right? Yeah, for sure. It's Porsche, sub, Snub Nose. Mm -hmm. Now, Pro... Pro Probacidia. Yes. Yeah, what? Halo and Probacidia were like, just like two EPs. Um, it's supposed to be a trilogy, but I, I ain't never come up with a third one, but like, Halo and Pro City. Yeah, Halo was the first <laughs> shit that I made. Like, I feel like I was the first person to drop a project when the pandemic hit. So, Snub Nose just came out like the end of 2019. And then the world shut down at the beginning of 2020. So, I just made an album in like a week. And that was genius shit. because everybody was going crazy yeah, over Snub Nose. I was like, fuck. Yeah, so, so it, it was it, perfect it time for us to be yeah, home listening to you. Yeah, it fucked my momentum up, but it was cool. It was like, fuck it. I just got to adjust. So, uh, yeah, May Halo and like 
six days, some shit like that. You know, I'm just trying to challenge myself while I was stuck at the crib. And then I dropped Proper City and later that year, but those was just like two EPs. And then IDFT was yes. the debut. And then what, Five and the Fuck You and Still. Yeah, and yeah, now and still, still, right? So yeah, this is where we at now. Yeah, yeah. So wait, Five and the Fuck You. Yeah. Can you explain this title to me? Because I don't know if I'm I, saying I, it right. I, yeah, I don't know if I'm supposed to be throwing you. up signs. Yeah, I don't no, know. No, no, no. Five and the Fuck You. It's just uh, like six. So five. Fuck you, six. So like zone six, like where we from, Atlanta. Fire. Yeah, yeah, the east side. You know, okay. So like five and a fucking. See, see, I like that though, cause that's the creative <laughs> side of an yeah, artist. Yeah, you know where they're yeah. from, with. And it was my sixth project. Nice. Uh, see, uh, oh, there was more to that <laughs> meaning then. I yeah, like that. So, I like that. Yeah. I like that. And then still. Yeah, still, and which was just a deluxe of five and a fuck you. So it was really still five and a fuck you. So yeah. This is the last, but those were easy though. Those are like weren't conceptual. Like those those two projects was just like trying to get some, just put something out. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I, I hadn't put anything out. So and I try to do one every year. So like, it was 21 was I, uh, IDLT, 22 was five and the fucky, 22, 23 was still five and the fucky. So now I gotta draw something this year. But All right. working on shit though. Yeah, work, I couldn't imagine shit. you working. You working? Yeah, working you out here? Stuff. Yeah. When it comes to lyricism and writing, is there ever, ever a moment you're like, I'm not going to read that and be like, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> um, or is it strictly you're just in your head and you do what you have to do? Yeah, no, I do. I, got, I, I feel like I got taste. You no, know what I mean? You really yeah, do. Yeah, I, you really I, do. I, I know when shit's like, like, bro, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> I, I don't even think about that shit. And they damn sure don't write that down. But no, nah, I think... I think I'm good, man. I think uh, he, he pretty much fucks with everything that I make, so, yeah. You came in with a focus. You came in with a momentum, right? So mm -hmm. getting signed, for me, it was a no-brainer for you. Right? Mm -hmm. You just kept that momentum going. You yeah, kept you that wave going. going, right? Mm -hmm. When it comes to putting out projects, when it comes to keeping that momentum going, what's something that Shady Records taught you? Cause you already had to me you had the package yeah had some we had some we had some little movement going um uh one thing is taught me they taught me for real for real is just like what i, what I spoke on earlier just like you got to be ready you gotta you know you don't want them to hold your hand hey when you sign with like a label like that like it's boutique but it's just like it has, it's rich in hip-hop history right mm -hmm. so like mm -hmm. like i said just signing to that just kind of was like all right man you actually gotta work harder Cause now you gotta, it's like a, you in the spotlight, you know what I'm saying? So you either gonna not work as hard as you can and not see how this shit could play out or, you know, just go as hard as you can and just see what's up with it, like for yourself. So like every man for themselves, even when you when it's with a team type shit, because if you don't want that shit, they can't want it for you more than you want it for yourself. So like, just take that approach when I, when I, when I approach, being being with a well, partner with the label or whatever it is, like I still got to do the work, like regardless, you know. So that's how that that's what I was talking about signing with Shady. You know, what I'm saying it was just like you're you got to be held accountable. You yeah. know what I'm saying. So, but it's a good thing, though. It's a good thing. Okay, you talk a lot about. I mean, when it comes to your rap, you talk a little bit about everything, mm -hmm. and I feel like with what I was hearing, with what I'm hearing lately, we're talking about the youth. We're talking about yeah. leaving a message behind. Mm -hmm. How important is that right now? Social justice issues, there's so much yeah, going on yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. We're living yeah. in. <laughs> it, it's crazy, so crazy because it's just like, to me, I don't know, man, I feel like, I feel like it's a battle that we, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it's a, a, even a winnable, a winnable battle, but I feel like if you don't speak on it, you know what I'm saying, like then it's just like, you know, like then what do you what do you mm -hmm. what do you feel about it? Like or or who you who are you as a person to goddamn feel the way about certain and, and, and not be able to put it on, you know, not be able to express yourself through music. Like, you know, so I feel like I gotta say my piece. Even though I, I don't think the shit's gonna change, uh not necessarily, you know, mm -hmm. like maybe not in our lifetime and shit, but like People have been doing it, you know. The the fuck the leaders the leaders speak about shit, man. They speak out on, like you said, injustices or just shit that they see going is wrong or they feel is wrong. So 
Like, if I can't put it in my music, then ain't no point in me making music. Seriously, you know and that's so, what makes hip-hop a culture, right? Exactly, that's what exactly. So. Just, I mean, we take it back to, I mean, we talk about Haiti when they did that mm -hmm. fight and they mm -hmm. learned mm -hmm. and they were practicing how to fight right, the aggressor right, right. through song and, yeah, and yeah, little yeah. did the aggressor yeah, know, yeah. right? So we take music back to all the way then. And... Um, yeah, man. Some of the stuff I was listening to, I was like, oh man, like I feel like you've always been a, a lyricist, right? Mm -hmm. But right now with what it's what's out, I feel like the high school kids yeah. always tap into the high school kids, but the high school kids mm -hmm. can relate to this. Yeah, they can relate to it. That's the thing. You can't like you it's important to get the youth some way. Whether mm -hmm. it's with 808s or whether it's cause you look cool, whether it's cause whatever the case may be, it's important to get them because their minds are still being shaped and shit. Like, yes. their minds ain't made up. They could literally, like, it'd it be people who hit me like, man, uh, I came up on your first project my senior year of high school, and, man, the, the summer just going into college just reminds me of blah, 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 and this is that, and just, like, it's certain shit that they heard that might have just, like, stopped them from maybe doing this or, mm -hmm. you know, made them do something else. or You know, it's just, it's important, man, because it's, like, those are the people who gonna be in, in charge of the fucking world. So, right? so like, that's the future. You know, they're the, they're the fucking future. So like, you know, you kind of just want to leave some type. You don't want to preach, but like, I want to talk to you like I would talk to my nephew. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's right. you know, like, like I talk to my nephew. You know what I'm saying? My nephew like my music. He's a cool, cool kid in college and shit. But like, for him to like it, I kind of that's how I kind of gauge it. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, which definitely need 808s and you know what I'm saying? Just shit to make the medicine a little bit sweeter. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, give it to them. Just make it sweeter. So, yeah. And I feel you tap into every sound. Mm hmm I mean, I'm going back to, like, what was it? 911? 911. Yeah, yeah. Yo, 911. But there was just so many sounds in between. There was not, there's, you could throw us something like 911 where there's a free, it sounds like freestyle. Yeah. And that whole feel when you throw us. Yeah. Oh, I mean. Yeah, I, I think I got, I got it all written down yeah, right nah, here. Nah, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I got, <laughs> I was like, I, I'm, I'm, yo, um, we get so many influences. A hundred yard, yard dash, dash yeah. and nine one one. Like this is yeah. like two total different worlds. Hell yeah. How important is that for you to tap into every? Because I feel like that's every sound. Yeah, no, nah, it's important. You playing with all the sounds. It's important to me just because like, I can jump on it. I can I can get on anything for real for real. Like, and so you're just showcasing that that talent. But also, just like I said, just like having so many different influences um, where you hear that beat and you automatically got something for it. Or you hear some shit with a guitar and you just like, oh yeah, I got something for this because I grew up listening to this or that. And just trying to implement as much of that as possible into your music, like I said, because you're leaving your mark. So like, you know, you want to show your influences and shit. So um, that's where that comes from, bro. Just being able to I feel like I can kill anything. You know what I'm saying? So you really could. He really could. <laughs> That's really cool, Thank you. <laughs> Philanthropy. I mean, we see right when it comes to Fifty Cent. Mm -hmm. There's so much music could take you to so many different. I mean, now right now we're living in a society where shit. You could be a teacher. You right. could be. Uh, look at me. I'm talking about right. myself. You could be a teacher. You could right. be doing interviews. You could be doing a little bit of everything. Right. right. So where do you want to go? Um. Anything in specific for now? Yeah, for now. Because, I mean, um, we need you. We need the lyrics. Yeah, we need you. for now, I think, <laughs> I think what I'm going to do is um, find a find a way to uh, release this music that I've been working on that's, that's just kind of different. Like, it's still it's still me and shit, but, like, I want to find a, find a way to just, like, do, like, release short-form content without it being corny. Um, I want to open my brewery that we've been working on. Ooh. I want to... Um, you know, give back, all of that good stuff, man. Go on tour, hit the road some more. I, w I need to get back to Europe. I want to get to Europe. So there's got a lot of stuff that I want to do. But yeah. Loving it. And it's tour, you stay in touch with your people, the fans. Yeah. The, how important is that for you? It's the most important thing because those are the people who. who yeah, get without you. them, what we doing yeah, out yeah, here? Get you here. <laughs> That's why we're here right now, you know. So yeah, and, uh, uh, touring, getting in front of the people, meeting the people, seeing the people. I got a, a Discord where, you know, they just, I just jump in there, holla at them every now and then, you know, so fans are very important. Fans are the most important thing. Yeah. Yo, one more thing. Mm -hmm. Funniest story with Eminem, if you mm -hmm. have a moment. Um, Probably just my first time meeting them. 
Oh no 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 no! They, they surprised me. Um, they surprised me one time in LA. I had a meeting at uh, Interscope, and um, nobody came or something. And then I was like, "Uh, you gotta go upstairs. Want to meet you upstairs real quick?" Uh, you were by yourself. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm just like, "What the fuck? We go upstairs, go upstairs." <laughs> and, and and Marshall and Paul are in there, and uh, yeah, it was just a surprise. But he was just goofing off the entire meeting. But it was cool as fuck, though. Oh, man. Like, I love yeah, that. Yeah, he, he cool as fuck, man. And we cool. love to hear stuff like that because it just makes you know, like you guys Hell, are yeah. a, a people. Hell yeah. You know. Hell yeah. Yo, Griff, I thank you. I, I thank you. Out in New York City doing your thing. Where you at tonight? Um, Tonight, we just going to be around the city. But tomorrow, we are at we are at Racket. Tomorrow, and then you Racket leave New tomorrow. York. You're going to Philly, going to and you're just going to keep bouncing DC. around from there. Oh, yeah, bouncing around Asheville. Atlanta is on Cinco de Mayo, so that'll be Ooh, fun. Ooh, that's going to um, be crazy. So, yeah, I'm excited That's not fair. Y'all did that on purpose. Right, Atlanta, man, Cinco de Mayo. It. I need it. I need it. Yeah, Yo, Griff, the pull-up. Truly right. from, like, thank nah, you. I thank you for the culture, for the lyricism. I mean, it's so needed. It's so needed. To me, hip-hop is where we're, the only place where we're hearing about the justice, the only place where we could really yeah. navigate yeah. and move the world. Nah, so, for sure. I thank you. I'm going to keep going, and I appreciate it. I appreciate y'all having me. Yo, y'all heard it here. Just seen the love, grip, the pull-up show, baby.